your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Five years. See, dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting. So, get on your way. Hi, everybody. Big Anklevich here. I'm back again. I'm slightly late because I think my plan was to do this right on like the first of every month, but um, it's not the first. Oh well. Uh, here I am. I'm back with another report on my five year plan. Um, okay, so how did it go this month in the five year plan? Well, uh, <laughs> it was not terrible. We'll just say that. Um, I didn't do amazing. Uh, this month that just ended was the NaNoWriMo month. And I know tons of people were rhymoing it up. Um, I have never tried the NaNoWriMo thing because I know that I don't have time generally in November. It's uh, usually a crazy month for me. Beyond just the Thanksgiving thing, which everybody has to deal with, uh, there's also sweeps, which is a particular thing for us TV type folk who have to deal with the fact that, uh, you know, we're trying to drum up ratings so that we can make more money selling our ads for more money when we sell them. So, yeah, we do a lot of stuff which uh, sometimes takes away my free time. My goal this month was to, or a goal this month, I should say, <laughs> was to have no zero word days, which basically means I wrote every day, no matter what. Um, there was no days where my tally was zero, which I thought was a good plan. Um, but very early on, I realized how difficult it was going to be because I <clears throat> I had to work a lot on sweeps on a Monday, and then that night I went and I met Rish to do our podcasting stuff, and I had absolutely no free time until 1 or 1.30 or whenever it was in the morning that I got home that night. And I thought, oh, no zero word days. So I sat down and I wrote. But I only wrote for a minute. I think I wrote like 100 words or less. So technically, I didn't have a zero word day. But basically, I did. Um, and I had several more days like that where okay, I don't have time to really write something. So I sat down and there was one day when I wrote 24 words, which is like a sentence, maybe two. And then I quit and went to bed. And I thought to myself, you know, this is pretty dumb. Um, and so the next time that came up, I just said, you know what, screw it. Zero word day, yay. Uh, you know, faking the non-zero word day by writing 20 words is, it's dumb. It's not, that's not the point of the, of the exercise. The point of the exercise is to get myself in the habit of writing every day, not to squeak by. I don't know, maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong with that. Maybe I should have uh, kept at it. Maybe thinking, oh crap, I got to make sure I write at least something today. Uh, is is better than not thinking about it. Maybe just thinking about writing is important enough that uh, it's worth doing the stupid 24 words uh, in a day type thing so that it keeps it on my mind. It, it might have been smart because once I hit zero words, I wasn't afraid to do it again. Um, and yeah, at the end of the month, I, I finished uh, the two things that I had been working on during the month, and I just I, I couldn't get started on the next one. I went a week. 
uh, like a week and a half with zero words, which was a kind of a bummer because I was on pace. Um, I think I told everybody that my goal was 15,000 words for the month, which I hit. I hit 15,000 words, but secretly and on my spreadsheet, I put that my goal was 20,000 words because I wanted to go above and beyond last month, even though last month I went above and beyond what my real goal was, which was 10,000 words. So in October, my goal was 10,000 words, and I did 15,000, and I decided, okay, my goal is 15,000, which was supposed to be my goal. It was, it was the step up from 10,000, but I'd already done 15,000, so, you know, secretly, without telling anybody, I was going to do 20. But then I didn't. I only made it to 15,000. I could have easily made it to 20 if I'd kept it up, if I'd written. And the worst part is, I, I, the reason I didn't keep going was I couldn't get myself started on my next story. Um, that's a problem I always have, and maybe I should just stick to writing only novels from here on out, because when I try and write short stories, I'll get into it, and I'll keep writing on it and writing on it until it's done, but then when it's done, I have a hard time starting the next one. Uh, I'll, I'll find myself just, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like it, Meh. and I won't do anything unless I'm really excited about the next story. So sometimes um, I just can't get going on the next one. So maybe I just need to write something that's really long so that I have that problem less often. I don't know. Um, although I did write something that's really long, I guess, when you think about it, because the story I was writing, which is called Do Over, it's long. It's, a, it's the longest story I think I've ever written. It's 25, 26,000 words. I can't remember how many words it is, but it's well into the terrain of novella. It left, uh, it left novelette, which I think is the highest I've gone before and short story long behind. Um, from what I understand, and Rish always asks me this every single time I mention the word novella, novelette, uh, is where the cutoff is. And I just use what they use on um, the Hugo Awards, where a short story is 7,500 words or less. A novelette is between 75 and 1,700 and five 17, sorry, 17,500, so 7,500 to 17,500 words is novelette, and then 17,500 all the way up to, I believe it is 40,000 is novella, and then 40,000 and up is a novel. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy that I wrote something that long. Um, it was hard. There was a point in the middle of the month last month when I was writing on do-over that I, I was getting bogged down and I was having a hard time. And I don't know if that will show in the, in the final product, if people will read it and they'll think, boy, he's struggling here. He's having a hard time writing this part or not. I've heard somebody say, and I want to say it was Dean Wesley Smith, but somebody was saying, you know, doesn't matter you know there there are times when the words are just flowing out of you like uh, water and there's other times where it, it, you have to have a pair of tweezers and pluck the words out one at a time with the painful pulling sensation that you get when you pluck something um, and uh, he says that you know people won't know when they're reading a book, what day it was where you, you know, you were sick that day or something and you were struggling through the writing process the entire time, whereas the other days when it was just, you know, gushing forth. So I don't know if that's true. Um, I know that some people, uh, you know, there's lots of times where, where you're reading a book and it gets to boring parts or parts that aren't as interesting. I remember um, reading Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series, 
And there would be parts like that where, you know, he had his three main characters and he would jump back and forth to their separate stories because they were in different locales now. And, uh, you know, every time a chapter would end and I'd go back to this other guy's story, I'm like, oh, damn it. I'm bored with this guy's story. I don't want to read this chapter because it, he's nothing's going on. There's nothing interesting with this guy. Um, and he had a good t tendency that every time I thought that, suddenly something interesting happened with that character, which was cool. Um, it was neat to see that happen where I'm just like, oh, I'm bored with this guy. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe I'm not bored. Um, every now and then, I know Josh Roseman has been reading the Wheel of Time series, and uh, he does a write-up of every segment that he reads. And here and there, I see them. I don't see them all, I have to admit, but um, they'll pop up on my Facebook or whatever, and I'll be like, oh, I'll check it out, and I'll go and look and see what he has to say. And sometimes he's like, yeah, this and this, and this was cool. And other times he's just like, yeah, this is happening, and I'm bored. Oh, boy, am I bored. Um, and I can see that because I remember being kind of bored in some of the same places that he was. Sometimes you have to do that kind of stuff, I guess, as an author. You have to write through the boring parts because if you skip the boring parts then when the interesting thing happens, it doesn't feel earned. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, the only, you know, it feels like you just jumped right to that and, and you didn't give the setup or whatever, you know, the stuff that you need to be able to tell the story. Sometimes it's just boring. I don't know. Sometimes it's just not a good story. It just depends, I guess. <clears throat> but yeah, I struggled with that story as I was writing it, but I did finally finish it. There was a day where I just pushed myself and I wrote over 2,000 words on the last day and I finished the story off and uh, I was pretty proud of myself and then I think either the next day or the day after that I had to go get tires put on my car and Rish had challenged me, or did he challenge me? I don't know if he actually challenged me but he mentioned something about us doing a Christmas uh, episode and that we didn't have a story for it. And I was saying something, that, well, maybe we should just write stories for it, do something kind of short and sweet that, uh, you know, we can do for the show. And uh, I think he wrote something. I think he's mentioned that he finished his story up. He's been telling me that... Uh, it's, it's, some point in his story the characters have to do something really dumb have to be like really stupid for the story to work and he doesn't know what to do because you, know, you can't you're not supposed to do that have your characters be way dumber than um you know an average person because then people will say the story uh, again didn't work that it wasn't earned uh, but anyways, he challenged me to, uh, to write, or he mentioned, maybe he didn't challenge me, but he mentioned that we should write stories. And so I sort of thought for a minute, okay, what kind of a story could I tell? And uh, I saw a commercial on TV while I was thinking about that, where it was about, you know, delivering the letter to Santa Claus. And... Uh, I thought about making a story about the letter to Santa Claus and, and what a kid might ask for and what... And I wanted it to be a Doonstief type story. So it wasn't going to be, you know, your regular uh, heartwarming Hallmark Channel type holiday story. Not that I, I dislike those. I, well, depending. I mean, I, I don't like the Christmas shoes. But, you know, I still love, I love, I mean, one of my favorite movies of all time is It's a Wonderful Life, which is nothing if it's not a heartwarming holiday story. So I don't despise that kind of thing, but at least this time around, it's not going to be one of those. 
but I had to go to the uh, the dealership to get myself some new tires. Apparently the car that I drive is almost impossible to find tires for. I went to more than one tire shop and they're like, oh, we don't carry your tires, but if you call me four days in advance, I can get them ordered for you. And I was pissed about that, I'll have to admit. Um, and in the end, I had to go to the dealership who had previously told me they wanted to gouge me for my tires. They didn't say it in so many words, but that's what they said. And uh, so I was uh, not looking forward to how much I would probably have to pay. Luckily, I got it for a little cheaper than they'd said they were gonna gouge me for, but it's still expensive as crap. I had to get four new tires. All my tires were bald and crappy, so. I got some new tires because it was supposed to snow the next day, or even that day, I think. It was supposed to snow later that Saturday, and there was a guy at work who, who looked at my tires that night, the Friday night, and he said, yeah, I was looking at your tires, and are you going to get those replaced before the snow? Because I was looking at your tires and thinking, man, that car's going to be a death trap come Monday. And I don't know, something about using the word death trap in association with my car made me motivated to, <laughs> to get new tires. So I went and I did it. Um, and while I was there, I took my tablet, which has a uh, keyboard that you can dock onto it and you can use the keyboard to type with. And so I got onto there and I wrote an entirely new story it took forever to get my tires. They, uh, they took like almost four hours to put the damn things on. It was like an hour per tire um, to put on my tires, which was a little frustrating. But because it took so long, I wrote the entire Christmas story while I was there. 2,500 words long. And I sat down and wrote the whole thing in the time that I was at the um, the auto shop, so that was cool. So I managed to write two whole stories, or finish two whole stories, I should say, because half of Do Over I wrote in October. I finished two whole stories in November, which is really good for me. That's something special. Um, the last time I wrote two stories in a month, was, uh, I don't know when, it was probably a long time ago, um, unless it was like in September or something, I don't remember, <laughs> that would be stupid to say, but it could be true, <laughs> anyways, um, so yeah, I got those two stories, but unfortunately once I finished the Christmas story, it was like my gas tank was, was empty, I couldn't get going again, I... I actually took this recorder and drove in my car and tried to sit and narrate and, and, and you know plan out and kind of work out the story, which tends to usually work pretty well for me. I'll talk and talk and talk and, and, and I'll get the story kind of worked out in my head. I have my next story that I was going to do is called uh, Undo, which is basically a variation on the exact same uh, the exact same uh, concept that is the uh, concept of do over and uh, it's just a little bit different and I have the idea for it and I started working on it one day I talked it over with myself and I worked out like the first two scenes then the next day or later on I took my recorder and I tried to work it out and, oh my gosh I could not I don't know if it was something about my state of mind that day or what it was, but I could not get myself. I was I was narr or talking over the story to myself like this. So I would be like, okay, so, so the guy, he, okay, he'll, Okay, so there's there's going to be a girl that um, that and that was like I did that the entire drive to work. 
I was just, I couldn't, it was like my, you know, the, the drain had been plugged and if only I could pull the, the crap out of the pipe, then it, the, you know, the water would start flowing again and I would get this story out. But that day it sure wasn't, man. There was a huge clog of toilet paper and crap in my head that was making it so the toilet wouldn't flush. Wait, that's probably not a good metaphor. Um, so, yeah, so I, um, I couldn't get it going with that story. And the worst part was, I could have been writing on something else, but I'd forgotten about it. I decided somewhere in the middle of the month that I was going to take Rish's, uh, his Halloween um, audio drama that he'd written, and I was going to turn it into a short story. And I hadn't told him about this. I actually wrote, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 words worth on it already uh, before I ever mentioned, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this for you because I know that you probably won't. He has kind of a thing about that where he doesn't want to take something that was just a, a script and turn it into a short story, usually. So I thought I'd be a pal and turn it into a short story for him. And then, you know, it could be a, almost like a collaboration, or I guess it is a collaboration. You know, he wrote the dialogue, I wrote the rest. And uh, he wrote the story, though, when it comes down to it. All I'm doing is filling in the blanks, but you know, that's okay. That's sometimes what people do. There are all different kinds of collaboration, uh, you know, ways of doing collaborations. And uh, you know, we can try this way. We've tried other ways. Here's another one. Um, I know that a lot of people will do that in like Hollywood for uh, you know, for screenplays and stuff. There'll be people where two guys go, they rent a hotel room somewhere away and they'll sit in that hotel room and one of them will basically be the idea guy and the other one sits at the keyboard and types the crap up and makes the scenes and turns the ideas into actual words. Um, I want to say that's how Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich work, but I could be wrong, I don't know. Not like I really know anything, I'm just an idiot. Um, but yeah, so I could have been writing on that the whole time that I was stymied on Undo, but I'd forgotten that I was doing that. And uh, somewhere in the middle of that, Rich sent me an email saying, oh yeah, if you're still uh, caught in the grips of this madness, here's my character bios that I wrote up for these guys. Um, maybe that'll help you and uh, yeah when I saw that I thought oh geez I should have been doing that all along what an idiot but <laughs> I still haven't gotten back to it I'm actually several days into December now and I still haven't gotten back to it I haven't written anything in two weeks today I will remedy that today I will write again I promise you. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm getting back on the horse. I'm getting back on the thing, doing my thing of the thing and the thing. Uh, but yeah, up, as far as my goals went last year, 15,000 words was my goal, and I did achieve that. I think writing two stories was also my goal, which I did achieve. Um, the only goals that I'm really still ha struggling with is... Uh, publishing stories. Um, yeah, that's kind of a pain. I still, it's it's something that you have to learn. You have to format them the right way and so forth, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, I went through the Smashwords style guide, and I think I've got the story, my first story I'm going to publish, all set. The one thing that I forgot to put in there was the info about the cover art. 
I got the picture uh, from somewhere. It's from a Creative Commons thing. Um, so I have to put an attribution in for it, and I hadn't put that in, and I need to still put that in. Um, so that's the one last step that I'm missing before I can publish this. My The story I was going to start out with is the story that I wrote, oh gosh, must have been like 2006. It was a long time ago. It's funny because uh, I was reading it, and it sounds like it's from 2006, because some stuff that the guy does where obviously he would now get on Facebook t to see these things he didn't they didn't have Facebook they had just something else he was you know using Google to search for these things and trying to figure this stuff out on his his uh, alumni his high school alumni web page blah blah crap um, and now, yeah, nobody would do that. They just get on Facebook and they find these people. Um, so it's very much a story of its era, uh, which is interesting. I don't know if I should change that so that it's a story of this era since uh, I'm public uh, since I'm publishing it in this era, but. Um, I haven't decided for sure, but on top of that, uh, the story that I was going to use, I read it through, I haven't read it in years, and I read it through and I realized I don't like the way it, I like the way it starts and the way it goes for a while, but then at a certain point it kind of falls apart and it doesn't work and some people's reactions and some of the things that they do aren't genuine or believable they're just they're wrong nobody would do this and I can't believe when I'm reading it that it would go that way and so I feel like I need to fix it I need to rewrite it so that the ending works and I always had trouble with the ending I remember having to rewrite the ending three times but now it looks like it's gonna be a fourth because I actually have to go back further and rewrite from earlier on because yeah the ending uh, it just doesn't it doesn't work um, so instead of doing that story which was called Black Angel uh, I'm going to publish first my story through the din of silence which we did on the, the show a while back um, that one is definitely ready because we did it on the show a while back and I don't I, I don't think it needs to change any um, it's always been one of the stories that I'm most proud of just because I think I did a pretty good job putting it together and plotting it out and all that kind of stuff so I've got art for it I've got it all formatted I believe and I'm ready to go so all I got to do is put the uh, info in for the, uh, the Creative Commons attribution thing. And then, yeah, it's done. And I will post it. I need to just make a minute and do that. Maybe I will swear that I will also post that story today. Because I could. I've got all the stuff in hand. All i got to do is finish up that little bit and I could post it. So, I will do that today. But yeah, that was a bit of a learning curve, and since I did it once, and it's been several weeks now since I put it together, I'm afraid I may have to go through that curve a little bit again to remember how to do it all for the next one. But I was hoping, and I'm sure it'll get that way as, it, uh, as time passes, it will be, you know, more and more uh, easy to do it each time. Um, what I'm trying to do is get it right, because I guess with Smashwords what happens is you publish something with them, and if you do everything right, they will create uh, all the formats for you. They will create a uh, Mobi file and a EPUB file 
and everything else for all the different bookstores that are out there. They do that for you. They throw it into this thing that they call the meat grinder and it pumps out files uh, of the different formats. And uh, yeah, so I'm hoping as long as you do it right, you get in there. And so I'm, I'm wanting to get it right so that it will publish to Amazon and it will publish to Barnes and Nobles and all the others for me. Uh, you know, and it'll be all, all set. Um, because having to do it and publish it separately everywhere has got to be kind of a pain. Um, but if it causes me too much trouble, I may wind up doing like Rish does. Rish, you know, he gets that, he gets problems with it all the time and he's sick of it. And so mostly he just publishes stuff to Amazon without, you know, bothering with Smashwords stupid meat grinder thing so we'll see how it works out I'm hoping that I followed the uh, style guide well enough that I won't get errors I guess we'll see how that works out but uh, yeah I, I promise that I will publish that today and hopefully the more I do it the more I will understand how it works and the quicker I can do them because my plan was to publish two stories every month. Last month, not November, but October, was I was supposed to publish one story, and it was supposed to be like my, my learning month where I figured out how to do it. And then the next month, November, I was supposed to publish two stories. So I'm already a whole month behind, or I guess two months behind on publishing, because it's now December and I still haven't done it. So... I'm gonna I'm gonna get it one done today, and then I, I gotta get on the next ones um, and get them uh, worked on. That's one thing that I found that is cool that I can do. I can take my stories and throw them into Google's uh, writing program, Google Docs Writer program, and uh, I can just like read the story while I'm laying in bed you know, going to sleep. These stories that I wrote, you know, a year or two or five ago, I can read them, and when I find typos or whatever, I can get in and edit them instead of just looking at them as an, a dead document that I can't edit. I can edit it as I, as I read while I'm laying there in bed. That's handy. Um, because, you know, I gotta lay in bed and read stuff uh, to get myself to sleep. So making it my own stuff and actually doing work, um, you know, that's cool. It's funny because I was talking with Rish last night and <laughs> I, I was just mentioning how, you know, I, there was stuff that I should have done. I should have been writing. I should have done this other thing. I should have done this thing. But instead, all I had done was sit there and watch episodes of Community that I hadn't seen before. And Rish talked about how it's funny that the two of us are like that, where the majority of people in the world, they go to work, they work their eight hours, they come home, and they watch TV or they read a book or they do whatever the hell they do in their free time and they don't beat themselves up about the fact that they didn't use their free time to be productive in writing, you know, be productive in this other side career that they want to have. You know, the majority of people don't do that. 95, 99, I don't know how many percent, but most people are just they're happy to be home and, and to, to relax and have a good time in their free time. And then there's people like us who can't. If we're not doing something productive like that, we feel guilty, endlessly guilty. And we're just sitting there going, oh, why? Why didn't I write? I should have wrote. I watched Community instead of writing. What a piece of crap I am. And... Um, 
yeah, I can't, I, I'm one of those people, I can't do it, I can't just relax. Uh, I envy a little bit those people, because I'm sure they're way happier than I am. I'm endlessly unhappy because I feel like I'm a failure, like I'm not doing what I should do. I'm not com- fulfilling my five-year plan, which is what this podcast is now all about. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's interesting. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's the way it goes, I guess. If you want to be a writer, you got to put in the time and you got to do it in your free time because to begin with, you're not making money off of it. Um, and if you are making money off of it, you're probably not writing fiction to begin with. You know, you're writing, I don't know, for a website, which I bet makes it harder to write your fiction when you get home because you wrote all day. Because I know that when I go to work and I do my stuff, I don't want to go home and deal with video and, you know, even though my kids would love to, like, make movies with me and stuff, it's hard for me to do that. I can't, I can't, I have a hard time giving a crap. I just don't want to. And, um, so sometimes I'm kind of glad I'm not a writer uh, otherwise because I'd probably be the same way. So one more thing. Uh, This is not part of my five-year plan goals, although it probably should be. Um, I think I may have mentioned how I let myself get really fat in the last six months. I had this problem come up. uh, I was at a a checkup, and they found that I had edema in my legs, which is just a fancy word for saying that there was swelling in my legs like my legs were retaining water basically because of something and there's a, a, a few things that can be the issue with uh, with that usually it's that you have a heart problem which kind of freaked me out um, and when they say oh maybe you have a heart problem I thought oh crap I probably better stop jogging and so I did which was a really bad idea, man. It was a it was a bad idea. But this whole edema thing kind of started my downward spiral. I went to several doctor's appointments. I had an echocardiogram, which told me that my heart was normal. They checked out my kidneys to make sure that they were doing what they were supposed to, and that was normal too. And eventually, this edema kind of went away. It stopped bugging me. And... I have just kind of left it. I probably shouldn't have. I know I'm a typical man in that unless I'm, you know, on my deathbed, I don't go to the doctor. I've had this cough for six months. Um, But it's only an annoying cough. At first I thought, okay, this is allergies. But it's still going six months later. I don't know what I might be allergic to that's giving me this cough, but if it was allergies, I think it probably would have gone away at some point, because there's not anything that's pollinating all year round. Um, Maybe I'm allergic to my cat. Maybe that's the way I can finally get rid of my cat. Oh, but anyways, I have this cough and I've left it for six months. What I think it really is, is this kind of asthma that my sister has. She has this kind of asthma that's like not a wheezing, um, you know, your throat closes up and you can't breathe kind of asthma. It's an asthma that gives you a thunderous cough. And she had this problem for a long time when she was in her teens and nobody could die and figure out what it was. And they kept saying, oh no, she's just faking it. I think she's, it's a psychosomatic thing. She just wants attention, um, which just shows you how awesome our doctors were when I was growing up. And there's your main reason why my mother's not still alive today. They said the same thing about her until uh, they found that she had tumors that were beyond uh, stopping. 
Thanks so much, Kaiser Permanente. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think I may have that same asthma thing. So yeah, all those kind of things. I don't go to the doctor to get these things taken care of. Um, instead, I just stopped doing everything that I should be doing to keep myself healthy. Stopped running. And I also kind of stopped eating good. Um, and I started gaining weight. And I kept gaining weight. And there was a time or two here and there where I was like, No, I'm going to do this and I'm going to get it right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back on diet and blah blah but I never did and I got so I've ne I'm now fatter than I ever have been before and I'm a little freaked out about that my body aches a lot more than it has even when I would run all the time you know my body would ache because of pounding and pounding on it but now it aches just because I'm fat and I'm, I'm crushing my poor body with all this weight and uh, I got to do something about it. And within the last week, I have figured out exactly how I'm going to go about it. And I started putting it into practice, and I think it's working pretty well. Um, I've been using the MyFitnessPal to uh, keep track of my calories. I've been planning out my meals and making sure that they're good and they're low in calories and fat and so forth. They're healthy meals that are going to help me lose weight. And I mark them all down on my thing. I was trying to go the entire year without drinking soda. And I did a whole month. And then I finally decided, you know what? First of all, it's not helping me again. I'm not losing any weight by completely abstaining from soda. Um... And so maybe what I need to do is use soda because I really like it. I love a nice Dr. Pepper, nice Mountain Dew Code Red. I really like it. But I'm not like addicted to it like some people. I think Rich is addicted to it. He has to have his Pepsi or he'll start getting a headache, you know, every day. I'm not like that. I'm, I just like it. And so I've decided that what I'm going to do is use it as my carrot. So I can have soda once a week when I get together with Rish, only then and only if I have been completely uh, good with my eating. Only if I've logged all my calories on the my fitness pal. And only if I haven't had sugar and, and treats and that kind of stuff during the week. This is my treat. It's my, my carrot that I can have. The good thing about this carrot is that I get to have it. It's not always on the end of the stick out of reach. Um, as long as I walk, <laughs> you know, a mile, my master will take the carrot down off the stick and feed it to me and put a new carrot up. Um, so, yeah, I did really good this week. And last night when I got together with Rish, I had a carrot. I drank a nice Dr. Pepper. And, and it's funny when you don't get it very often, just how amazingly more tasty it can be. And so, yeah, that's my way. And, I, and I've lost hmm, something like eight pounds already, so I'm really excited. Uh, it's working well. And that is what I weighed this morning even after going out with Rish last night to pizza and drinking soda and having several pieces of pizza. Um, so that was my big cheat night. And now, whenever the next time is that Rish and I get together is the next time I get to have soda. Um, and the way things are going in December, it may be a long time from now because Rish is very busy at his job at this month. And uh, I'm going to be out of town uh, for a while during this month as well. So, so it may be a long time before I get to have another soda. I'm going to have to be good for quite a while. We'll have to see. Um, I'm really hoping it'll actually just be only like three or four days away. Because if it's not, it may be three weeks away. So hopefully we'll get together again soon. So yeah, that's my plan. 
uh, my weight. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is and uh, and I'll keep reporting back on it, I guess. Um, my, my goal is to get to 200 pounds, which is a very long way off. Uh, up until just the other day, I weighed 302 pounds, which is heavier than I've ever been. But <sighs> I'm sad that I ever made it over 300 because that was one of those things that I was able to say, hey, I never made it over 300. I was in 290s, but I never made it over 300. Well, now I have. And, uh, but this morning I weighed 294. So we'll see how this keeps going. I'll keep reporting on it each time I do an ankle cast. Next month, I hope that I will be all the way down to something like 280. Or maybe even less. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, all right. Well, I am at work, so I need to go. So I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for listening. I'm Begankovic. Your mountain is waiting. Get on your way. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're going to do today. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! Think it'll right? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye! Bye.